What's your best relationship advice? Talk to them when you're upset. They can't read your mind. If you hold all your negative thoughts inside it will just make you feel bitter about everything, until it stops working. My problem is not knowing whether the problems I create in my head are just me being crazy, or if they are actually justified. Then you talk with your soul, and mention that you're not sure if it's justified or not. They should reassure you, and understand either way. Find someone who you can go on vacation with. It sounds easy, however, if there's someone that you don't want to get rid of at the end of a vacation, you're probably okay with them. It's funny. I knew I deeply loved my now husband when we went away for the weekend, and I missed him when he dropped me off at home after good point the opposite is the reason i knew i needed to break up with the last girl i dated she went on a week-long vacation and i remember thinking the day she got back that i really wasn't that excited to see her you and your partner should also be best friends straight up opinion but i think a lot of people forget that you're so really should be someone you love spending time with not someone who is just there to say they are your significant other can I add someone who makes you laugh? It helps to be married to the funniest person I have ever met. Do people date people who don't make them laugh? That sounds horrifying. Things take time, hard work, and dedication. The spark is going to die after the honeymoon phase. Don't take that as a give up sign. Take it as a sign to try to bring a new spark in. And nobody can tell you how to live your life. Not even them. Make sure you know what toxic signs are, and don't justify anything. Difference between infatuation and love is the same difference between motivation and discipline. Infatuation and motivation are both fleeting, they come in strong, and then suddenly go. Discipline and love are active choices. You buy into it, you build it, and then you ride it out through the good and bad. Be happy on your own. Don't rely 100% on your relationship, if you need happiness. There is always a time, where you are on your own, and you need to pleasure yourself. Before I entered my relationship I was very independent, but felt lonely. Now I don't feel lonely anymore, but a bit less independent. My emotions are kind of at the mercy of my relationship sometimes. If I attempt to take a step back I get worried, that I may not be putting enough effort which could damage the relationship. How do I go about becoming a bit more independent slash having my emotions be less at the mercy of my gf whilst also maintaining healthy distance with her? Not an expert at all but here are my thoughts. Do you guys spend a lot of time hanging out together? Do you have separate hobbies or friends? Having independent aspects of your lives, if you don't have many already might make it easier for you to spend time together while you are in different moods. Also, do you find if you or your gf are unhappy the other tends to become unhappy too? For example, I think acknowledging how your partner is feeling is important, but it's rarely important to emulate those feelings as much as it is to understand them and accept them. Is that the kind of dependence you were talking about? Don't expect them to be perfect. Don't hold them up to a super high standard. They won't meet it. That being said, know your worth. This accept their flaws but help them grow from their mistakes if they are unwilling to learn from mistakes leave even if they are unwilling though if you truly love them would you ever want to leave their side you should love someone for who they are flaws and all yeah no depends on whether it's a deal breaker or not a mistake could be leaving the condiments out after making a sandwich yeah they could learn but probably not worth ending things over even if they don't. A mistake could also be emotionally cheating on you, and flirting with others, when you have told them not to. Everyone must evaluate for themselves, whether the mistakes we make are just that, or maybe flags for a larger issue. Above all, be yourself. Don't get caught up, in trying to be somebody you think others want you to be. Unless yourself is an asshole, in which case be a better version of yourself. That's a good piece of advice, that was given to me a little while back. Unless yourself is an asshole I mean, if you look at yourself, and genuinely come to the conclusion, that you're an asshole, you should probably work on trying to improve yourself, before you look for a serious relationship. Remember during fights slash disagreements it's not you vs your so, it's you and your so vs the problem. I totally agree, 
In a lot cases this requires a lot of humility though. In my experience, I've had some temper problems in the past. It's me and my so versus. My character flaw. I'm glad she was willing to correct me and help me grow up instead of just saying goodbye right away. I'm glad I had the courage to admit I'm flawed. It's me and her versus. Our flaws. I don't know if it's the best advice for everyone one because we all carry different kinds of baggage. But my husband and I laid out all our cards the first night we met. I told him everything. My wants, my needs, my expectations, my goals, everything. And he did the same. We were both so tired of the dating game that we basically both said, this is me, this is what I'm looking for, take it or leave it. We were so honest with each other that we left the date feeling like we've known one another forever. We celebrate 5 years together this December. I guess what you should take away is that honesty is key. Don't deny who you are or your wants and needs. And don't deny someone else this either. We all need love. If you make it past year 6 you will probably make it to 30 years. Or so say the stats. Establish, maintain, and respect boundaries. Learn to compromise and apologize. You're growing together. It's you two versus the world, not you two versus each other. Their concerns or complaints might be stupid to you, but to them it's important. That thing they are complaining about that you think is silly is not silly to them. Leaving a spoon in the sink may seem trivial to you because you would do all the dishes in the world for that person, but they are interpreting the spoon in the sink as not giving a shit. Their perspective is their reality, regardless of whether you think it is stupid and a bad perspective. Do with that information what you will. Either you need to adjust your behavior to be more conforming to their preferences or you need to accept that their preferences are too unreasonable. Don't just say your feelings are dumb and think you've won an argument. There are only two solutions to the problem. You fix your behavior to meet their needs or they have to adjust what their needs are. People are unlikely to change their needs. Most dating experiences and relationships don't work out and that's okay. Most of the time it has nothing to do with you or the other person not being great or needing to improve in any way. It's just not right. It's like spaghetti and ice cream. Both are delicious, but not together. Spaghetti needs to find some bolognese sauce and ice cream needs to find some hot fudge. If you're not feeling it with someone, you don't need any excuse to leave. If you want out you can go at any time. As long as you tell the other person in a way that shows you're a decent person be calm, don't criticize them, be decisive, and respect their privacy, you're fine. In the same vein, don't try to stick with something when you're just not feeling it. Just because you think the other person is great, or the best you'll ever do, or it's better than being single. Don't try to change yourself to please the other person and get them to like you more however learning to compromise is different, and this is important. And if you feel like someone is sending you signals that they might want out often misconstrued as mixed signals, just make it easy for them and go. It may make you feel like shit to break it off with someone who will likely find it a relief you took care of the dirty work or only wants you when they feel like they can't have you. It's better for everyone that you free yourself to find someone better. Ice cream, go find your hot fudge know each other's love languages everyone is different in what ways make them feel loved there's a good book on this called the five love love languages short read really helped me and my wife to be understand the way we show each other love got a crush on someone you fancy yesterday was the best day to tell them you never know if they could go missing and never be found again edit okay i made this comment lie thirdly but my crush did go missing now I made it all awkward and shit. I love the only slightly related. Sorry saying I read somewhere on reddit. The best time to plant an olive tree is 30 years ago. The next best time to plant one is right now. Apostrophe. Relax, share, and trust. Be open, honest, and flexible. Willing to learn as you go and adapt to each other's needs and interests. If you can't make yourself happy, they won't be able to make you happy either. 
I second this, got extremely close to someone with depression and mental illnesses. They refused to get any help saying they didn't want someone else telling them how to live their life. My dumbass didn't see the huge red flag, and thought I could bring the happiness. I couldn't. Adding to this, as someone who was once that depressed person dating someone who was also that depressed person, we made each other feel amazing. Then the honeymoon phase ended, and oh boy the mutual toxicity was astounding. It was a very brutal learning experience for me, but I'm grateful for the fact it happened, and I was able to come out of it a better individual. Decide to invest effort into the relationship, and if your partner does not reciprocate, then wait for someone who wants to work with you to create a successful partnership. Exactly. I spent 3 months with someone who gave half the effort I did, and when things fizzled out on his end I very much still had feelings. Wait for someone who loves you as much as you love them, and leaves no doubt in your mind about it. It's worth it. Seriously take into consider, that the person you are falling in love with is a being who is always changing. Your wavelengths may be in sync with each other now, but be watchful for, when you're growing at different speeds. A good partner will never stop growing, and you'll want to grow together. Someone who is exactly the same on all levels of spirituality and all other fronts as well, should be approached with caution. We are meant to never seize up and stand still. This was a red flag, that ended one of my significant relationships years ago. We had been together for 2 plus years and he'd make comments that pretty much implied he was looking at marriage as the end, where he could stop trying so hard. Like, I can't wait, until we get married, so I can stop working out and get fat. Fitness and health is super important to me, and I knew that wasn't going to fly. There were other ways where I just realized I was going to keep growing, and he was not. For those who have been together for a while. FCK first. Going out for dinner? To a party? Anywhere that you'll get home kinda late, but think hey it would be fun to get laid after this? FCK first. Then when you can go to bed like you really want. Or, best case scenario, you get to duck again. Especially this before going out to dinner. That way you can eat what you want without worrying about being too full for 6e times later.